Hey guys, Nathan here, and today I'm going to be overviewing a program and giving a brief tutorial on how to use it. And today's program is called Gourmet Recipe Manager. You can install it by hopping over to the Software Manager and searching for Gourmet, as that is what it's called in the package repositories here. And just double click on it there. And in my case, it's installed. Um, if you have installed, of course, it'll say install here. Click that, put in your password, it downloads, it installs, um, it frees 8 megabytes of disk space if I remove it, so it's not that big of a file to install. Um, I think it was like 6 megabytes to download or something, not a lot, real fast, um, fast and easy, so that's always good. So once that's installed, obviously you can close Software Manager, and then pull it up, it'll be called Gourmet Recipe Manager in your menu. Um, I forget what that is categorized under. Probably under accessories. Yeah, under accessories, Gourmet Recipe Manager. So you just pull it up, little load screen, and voila! Now one thing to note, uh, well two things to note actually. You can install it from the from the website itself, which would be HTTP grecipe slash man or dash manager dot sourceforge.net. Um, that does get updated more often than the uh, software manager. However, as of right now, they both are the same version. So either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, and the second thing to note is on a fresh install, you will not have any recipes. Um, I will have a link in the description to all of these recipes. I have 87 recipes in here. Um, I'll have a link so you can download all those and import them. Um, so not to worry that you're not going to have any recipes at all to put in there because I have a bunch here and I have a lot of different ones, beverages, appetizers, breads, cakes, desserts, um, lots of yummy stuff. But let's get down to the nitty gritty here. Um, I suppose the most important thing to do would be know how to add a new recipe. So we'll just hit file new or you could use the keyboard shortcut control N and... For some odd reason, that popped up on my second screen. So, just pulling it over. Uh, title. Just going to call it cake. Yield. Well, it makes, say, 20 servings. We have a drop down here. Um, you can put, you can type anything new in, and it'll show up for future recipes. So, like, you know, cake while we're just doing servings. Category. Again, drop down. That'll show you everything you have used in the past. Um, I really wish they would change this and just give you a checkbox on these so you could do multiple categories. Currently, to do multiple categories, how do we do this? I believe you just put a space between them. So we do cake, maybe, it, no, it's not apple, it's chocolate. Preparation time. How long does it take to prepare this cake? We'll say it takes 30 minutes. Cooking, time is finished, hours, minutes, or seconds. So make sure you let it know what type of uh, 30 that is. Cooking time, same thing. It'll yell at me if we don't give it a minute, hour, or second. Cuisine. What style of food is this? Well, I'm going to say it's American. And you can leave these boxes blank. You don't have to put anything in those. Rating. It's chocolate cake. It's five stars. I mean, come on. The source. Um, again, this will automatically fill with previous things you've used. Um... And again, you don't have to put anything in there. I'm going to leave it blank because I don't know. Web page. If you got it from a website, you might want to put the web page in for just your benefit. Add image. Um, I actually saved this picture to my desktop. Right there. I used to open. Bam. There the picture is. Now the ingredients. What's really nice about this, it'll automatically, as the little pop-up box is saying here, it'll automatically try and figure out what you need. So... We'll say one cup flour. Bam. It says the amount is one. Unit is cup. Item is flour. One cup sugar. Does the same thing. One teaspoon. And mind you, this is not a real recipe, so don't try it. Because I'm just going off of, you know, whatever I'm coming up with. One large egg. Unit is large. Okay, this is where... You might want to get a little persnickety and say, 
I don't want a unit of large. That doesn't make sense. So we want to change that. Okay. Double click. It'll pull up a drop down, which because the window is so small, you can't really tell. So let's make that a little larger. The drop down, this will um, update to anything you put in it. So there will be something in here called unit now. Um, but let's go with whole, one whole, and then we'll just type, click on that and type in large egg. You could also just leave that nothing, just one large egg. You don't need a unit because what kind of a unit is an egg? I mean, it's an egg. I mean, or you could do large egg there. For reasons that I'll get to a little later, you don't want to use a unit of large egg. Because um, if you ever use the shopping list feature, that'll mess everything up and it'll be way confusing. So this is our recipe. I know, it'll make a delicious cake, so please don't try it. Instructions. Let's see, mix flour and sugar. Add egg and vanilla. Cook for 25 minutes. Notes. Frost to make delicious. One cool thing, if you make a typo, like, well, I guess it's not a typo here, typo say. It does have spell check built in. So, no worries there for those of you who aren't superb spellers. Um, you have some basic, some basic um, stuff here for your text. You can italic, bold, underline, cut, copy, paste, all that fun stuff. Now, before you save it, you can view the recipe card which maybe you can't do before you save it because that just came a blank so we hit save view recipe card here we go it'll show us the picture of the cake our rating preparation time cook um, anytime you have a time in your instructions you can click on that and it'll pull up a little timer here oops you got some different options for your sounds notes you start it it counts down like you would expect the clock to. Um, reset, pause, start. Um, in this case, I don't want the timer going off in 25 minutes, so we will leave that. We'll close this, close that. A recipe is saved, um, and we can just type right in the search box here for cake. And this will pull up anything with cake in the category and the title. Um, and I have 29 results, so it looks like we have to go to the next page. And there we go. There is our cake. We double-click on that. And again, this opened on my second window for some goofy reason. Here's our cake, our recipe, everything. Say so we want to add this to our shopping list. Just click the Shop button. This is getting annoying, everything opening on the second window. So here's the cake. Here is the items that we need. And already have our pantry items. I've never used the shopping list. Um, because I don't do all the cooking, I don't do all the shopping, so it'd be really confusing for me to try and figure this out. But basically, you have the items that you need for your recipe, um, and items that you already have in your pantry. Now, there is a way to add items like flour. Add that. Now, say I don't want to add this to my shopping list. I'm going to add that to our pantry. And I want to change the amount. You should be able to somehow. I don't know how it works because I don't use it. But you can say you have stuff in your pantry. So then when you make a shopping list, you know, if you have eggs in your house, you really don't need to buy more eggs when you're buying food for this recipe. And then you can print your shopping list. And you can get sorting stuff to sort it for the you know, the order of your shopping and everything. Right here is move to pantry. We go flour. I don't know why I moved the sugar too, but whatever. Um, like I said, I, I didn't use that a lot, so I don't know much about it. Um, some other cool stuff. Let's look at the tools. You have a unit converter. So say you're going, the recipe calls for one bushel. With different densities well okay let's go something different they want a pint and we don't know our math and we can't figure out how many cups that is where is the cups here we go so to tell us ooh one pint equals two cups yay again this is probably not the best example 
It'd probably be better to go like teaspoons. Teaspoons. I'm just gonna other teaspoons. Five teaspoons. Oh, it's a tenth of a cup. Okay. So, say we needed a lot of teaspoons. We needed 25 teaspoons for something. A little more than half a cup. So we could just measure half a cup and add a few drops. Um. The other thing is in the settings. We have preferences. Um, I have a list of all the different columns that you can have on your recipe index, which is right here. So we could add in the website, the yield, yield, preparation time, cooking time, any of that information, how many recipes per page, information on card view, and your shopping list again. A little bit of preferences for that. Uh, more importantly are the plugins. Send it to email, nutritional information. If you have a new install, you can safely click this button. It'll work. If you don't have a new install, it'll probably still work. Unfortunately, on my system, I messed something up, so it doesn't work for me. Browse recipes. I highly recommend checking that button. Meal planner, you won't see. I'm actually trying to code my own plugin. Not working very well. Um, but yeah, you will not see that. Tools. Different stuff in here, find duplicate recipes. If you're importing recipes from people a lot, definitely turn that on and use it. Like every single time you uh, import anything, because if you have duplicates, it'll find them. Spell checking, you can turn off. So if you like to have words spelled wrong and don't like the little red squiggles, you can shut that off. Import and export, um, a lot of different options there. I would pretty much recommend just having them all on. Unless you have a slow computer and you know you're never going to use some, you might want to turn them off because they are going to slow a little bit. Um, but back over to Browse Recipes, let's show that off. Um, so you'll notice we got a second tab here, Browse Recipes. And we have Cooking Time, Preparation Time, Category, Cuisine, Rating, and Source. So if we click on any of these buttons, we'll do Preparation Time, double click actually, it'll tell us how long you're going to take. Um, is it notice here anything that's red is an hour or less? So this is you know pie charts. Anything that goes to the blue is more than an hour. Um, and I believe the blue is actually in fractions of twelve hours, because this is five half a day is full. Four days it goes goofy because it's too long. That's for like beef jerky or something. You'll be able to find it in the recipes if you download them. Um, more fun though, I like looking at like categories because here we get pictures, which is cool. But if we go back and we look under, uh, which one is it? Cuisine, is it? Ah, uh, I forget which it is. You know what? I think it's categories. Um, and then cakes. Let's do because there's 24 of those. It'll give us, let's try a different one. one with more pictures. Here we go. Um, so you'll see here on your picture, you have a picture of your recipe. Then in the upper corner, preparation time here, looks like it's about 25 minutes. Cook time, looks like it's about an hour. Um, it'll show a rating as well, if you have rated it. So that is cool. Um, and if I had made more of these cakes, a lot of these I haven't. If I had made more, I would have more pictures, which sometimes if you're just going through, you're like, I don't know what I want to make. Let me look through my recipes, see what I have. And you have the pictures. A picture might strike your fancy, like, ooh, pink lemonade cupcakes. I want to make those. And then you just double click. Opens on your second screen if you have a second screen open, which I'm hating right now. Um, and voila, your recipe. Recipe for the cupcakes. Oh, I should show you how to do this real quick. 3littlepiglets.com is the web page. You can click that. The web page will open. Again, your timer for your times there. Um, but yes, you can do categories. Let me show you that real quick by just creating a new recipe on the second screen, of course. Ingredients. Right here we have this button. Add a group. We can add a group. Let's name the group Cake. Now if we click on Cake, we can do one cup flour. And as you notice, there's a little plus there. Now we have one cup of flour. So one cup sugar. 
for some reason doesn't always go into the cake. Not really a big deal. Just click and drag it, and it'll pop it in there. Now we have another great group. Frosting! Which, for some odd reason, the sugar went into. Which it shouldn't have. Frosting, we have two cups. Sugar. One cup. Butter. Again, it doesn't go into that frosting group, so you have to manually drag it in. There you go. Um, another way to do it is by using the up and down. As you'll notice, that'll pull it out of the groups. Going up won't put it into a group. You can't put it back into a group. To put it in a group, you have to drag it in. And yes, sometimes clicking on it will think that you want to do that. So you got to know where you're clicking. Optional ingredients, um, you know, say this is a chocolate nut cake. We have nuts. Nuts might be optional, you know. We don't really need the nuts. Let's check the optional. Um, and that goes with shopping list stuff. Um, the optional items will ask you, do you want to add this? Because maybe you're not going to add that in your cake when you cook it this time. So you don't need to buy your chopped cashews or pecans or whatever kind of nuts. Um, so that's that. Import from files. If I had any files to import, I would tell you how to do that, but I don't have any right now. Um, I'll show you if you do download my package here of all of these recipes, you'll just be doing file, import file, um, and I will probably have it in a zip file, though I'm not positive. I might do it as a bunch of gourmet XML files. Or actually, with Gourmet XML, let me just show you because you can export here. Export all recipes. They give you an option of how you want to do it. Um, and I will just export as a Gourmet XML. So then you will just be importing. And you can leave it at all importable files. But whatever, you'll be importing your Gourmet XML file. You click open. It'll pull up a dialog. It'll show you results going across the screen as it imports. And then I would run the duplicate recipe converter afterwards. And um, recipe information and ingredients. Now, if you do have a brand new install, you don't need to do that because you won't have any duplicates. And right now, I'm not having any duplicates. So obviously, I can't show you how to do it. But you have an option to merge. It'll give you a list here, the recipe names when it was modified, and what's similar about them. There's a check button. That'll go here. You can check to merge selected, merge all, or close. Sometimes you will have recipes that'll pull up saying they're duplicates, but they really aren't. You'll just have to learn to live with them or change something around in them so they don't show up as duplicates. Um, changing the title if possible, but when you have three different styles of chocolate cake, kind of hard to have three different names for chocolate cake. But that is a wrap.